Hi guys, and welcome to the new normal. We are only one of hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of churches around the world who are figuring out how to best put our, our, our services online for people who are, are missing coming together on Sundays. And uh, it's been quite a lot of learning for many of us. It's been interesting to see how people respond to church online. I've heard a couple of interesting types of responses. One is people who say that they're really glad it's there because it's better than nothing, but it's not the same. And that's kind of where I'm at. I have one friend who said that it's like watching a hockey game on TV instead of putting on your skates and hitting the ice. And I, I totally get that. Um, another thing that I've seen online that I don't agree with quite so much is uh, on social media, people post things about how, you know, this current situation just proves that we don't need church buildings. Churches don't need buildings. Buildings are uh, expensive and they're time consuming and they take a lot of energy to maintain and they're a distraction. And, uh, you know, we are the church. All we need to do is get out there in the world and be the church. We don't need buildings. Who needs buildings? And while there is truth in that, I still have to say yeah, no. Yes, people are the church. The church is people. When Jesus said, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, he wasn't looking at architectural drawings. He didn't have blueprints in mind. He was talking about his church, his ecclesia, his gathering of people. Jesus was talking about a quirky, sometimes dysfunctional adopted family of people living, you know, living in Christ, living in his godness, taking his name, living in the cross, living in our need for reconciliation with our creator, uh, people living in resurrection, knowing that we have this unending hope of life forever, starting now. Uh, people who are a family of fellowship, living as part of each other, uh, a family of worship, um, a family of expression, and living out our joys and sorrows, and a family of ministry, living um, the work that we, he has given us to do, a family that, that is building Jesus' kingdom day by day in the world. And and because that's who we are, because we are God's gathering of people, from day one, we have needed buildings. We have met in, you know, somebody's rec room to feel the fire of the Spirit for the very first time ever together, to meet in, in each other's homes, to share meals and share communion. Uh, to meet in the, the courts of the great temple in Jerusalem, to hear the apostles teach, to meet together in synagogues so that we could pray together, to meet even in catacombs, hiding underneath cities, hiding away for a time in safety and rest, to find the courage that we needed to head back out again. And since that time, since those early days, yeah, we have, as a family, we have grown we have evolved, we have changed, we have been enculturated in all different parts of the world. And through that growth, we have set aside places and spaces specifically so that we could use them for those very same activities, the activities of sharing together, of learning together, of praying together, and of resting together. This Sunday is Palm Sunday. It's one of the biggies in the course of a year. When we, when we remember the events around Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem, when um, people lined the streets and welcomed him the same way that they would welcome a, a conquering military hero. They gathered around him and they shouted and they sang and they, they shouted hallelujahs. Because he was here, he was finally here, shouting hosannas, oh save us, because they were excited to see what they thought 
he was going to do next. I learned something interesting recently uh, from Catholic doctrine and tradition. And yes, I know it says Baptist and we are Baptist. We have the tank and the casserole dishes to prove it. But bear me out because this is kind of cool. You may be aware that the Catholic worship gathering is called the Mass. And it's called the Mass because the Catholic understanding, and I think it's a good one, is that there is only one Mass. There is only one gathering of God's people and of all creation. One gathering in prayer and celebration. And that one gathering is an eternal happening. It's been happening since there was time for it to happen in. It was a gathering that has always been happening, is always happening, and will always be happening. It happens in an invisible realm that we can't see yet. It's like a never-ending triumphal entry with all of creation always shouting their hallelujahs and their hosannas. When we say church online is not the same, I think that what we are missing is so much more than fellowship, than being with friends. It is so much more than the preacher's jokes and the cookies and more than our favorite songs and more than our favorite pew and more than hearing good old Mrs. Faffle think honking out the alto part like a foghorn. We are not just missing what is comfortable and familiar. We are missing something that we have never yet done. We are missing something that we have never yet seen with people we have never yet met. To quote that great ancient theologian, Doctor Who, a footprint doesn't look like a boot. When we gather in our dozens or our hundreds, we are a visible expression of something eternal. We are a tangible, taste and see relatable expression of something that is indescribable. It's the moment when we brush up against the eternal, which is pressing itself into our hearts and our bodies and our minds. Our gathering is the footprint. We have not yet seen the boot. When we sing together, every voice that we raise in our spaces that we've set aside is joining with every voice that has ever been raised, ever will be raised, is being raised anywhere in the world, in worship, in adoration, in prayer, and in need. Every voice, human and otherwise, that has ever cried, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. When we miss Sunday mornings, that's what we are missing. I'm going to go to the piano and sing a song. And this song has lyrics that are taken from one of the best descriptions that anyone has been able to come up with of the little that they have glimpsed of what is beyond what we can see on a Sunday morning of the worship that happens all the time, always has, and always will. And when I sing, I will be thinking of singing with you. And I hope that you will sing with me. There's going to be a link on the screen right up here somewhere. I hope you will click on that link. It'll take you to the video for the song. The words will be in the description. Please sing with me. Let's stand together in the eternal and sing in the here and now. 